Well, hello there and welcome to the channel. My name is Derek and today we're going to be talking about the Roland Phantom O series of keyboards that was released by Roland just this year in 2022. And I want to do a direct comparison between the Roland Phantom O series of keyboards and the Roland Phantom, the big brother to the Phantom O series. Now, I do wanna say before I get too far along that this particular video is not much of a playing video. It is more so a video that is a comparison video between these two and what they have. It is not a sound demonstration. So if you're looking just to hear what the Phantom series of keyboards sound like, this is not the video for you. However, if you do like in-depth walkthroughs, uh, tutorials and stuff like that, please consider liking um, this video and subscribing to the channel, hitting the bell notification icon so that you can always get notifications when I upload new stuff because I'm frequently doing so. So today it is all about the Roland Phantom O and I wanna talk about the differences between the two keyboards because one of the main questions people ask is what's the difference? They knew, They know when the Phantom O comes out, they know it's gonna be less money. You know, they know it's gonna cost less. Uh, that's something people know kind of right off the bat because it's kind of the little brother to the the big Phantom. But they wanna know what am I losing with this Phantom O that I would get on the regular Phantom? And they wanna know, is it a good deal or am I gonna be losing something that's very, very crucial to what I do? So let's talk about uh, the hardware. Let's just go over to hardware really quickly and talk about the differences, the main the main differences. So uh, first things first, um, the weight. So because this is a plastic chassis and this is a metal chassis, um, the weight difference is rather substantial. Now I have the Phantom 07 and the Phantom 7 here with 76 keys. Uh, the Phantom, the regular Phantom 7 is 39 pounds and one ounce. So this is actually 39 pounds for the 76 semi-weighted keyboard. The weight on this keyboard here, the Phantom O, is 15 pounds and seven ounces. 15 pounds, seven ounces, 39 pounds, one ounce. So this is just shy of 40 pounds. And this is 15 pounds and some change. So big, huge weight difference. Now, if you're getting the 61 key uh, keyboard, this is your 61 Phantom is gonna be 33 pounds and 12 ounces. And your 61 Phantom O is gonna be 13 pounds and four ounces. If you're getting the 88 weighted key bed and you want all 88 keys and they're all weighted and so on and so forth, in the big Phantom, you're looking at 61 pounds and two ounces. And in the Phantom O, you're looking at 32 pounds. So you can get 88 keys in this keyboard and it's 32 pounds. The 76 keyboard, the 76 key keyboard in the regular, the regular Phantom is 39 pounds. So you can get 88 keys that are weighted and it still weighs less than the 76 keys unweighted if you get it in the Phantom O. So if you're looking for weight savings, this definitely gives you that weight savings. Now, even though this chassis here is plastic, it is actually well built. It doesn't actually feel cheap. No, it doesn't feel as robust as the metal and so on and so forth down here, but it actually feels like it is very, very well put together, very well made. It doesn't feel like a cheap keyboard, um, even though it is made of, even though it's made of plastic. Now, the key beds are going to be, they're going to be different. So the key bed uh, on this keyboard is not as premium quality as the key bed on the um, on the regular Phantom. So that should be something that you would expect. Um, same is true if you get the 88 weighted keys, the 88 weighted keyboard and the Phantom O is not going to be the same key bed as the regular Phantom. So just something that you need to make note of. But in my opinion, this key bed here doesn't feel cheap. It doesn't feel as premium as the key bed on the Roland Phantom, the regular Phantom, but it doesn't feel cheap at all. So I have criticized the Roland, excuse me, the Yamaha Modi X6. I have that keyboard as well. And that key bed actually feels very, very cheap to me. Um, it, it doesn't just feel like one step down from the, you know, from its bigger brother, the Montage, but it actually feels cheap in my opinion. Now, key beds are just a matter of opinion, but in my opinion, this key bed is better than the Modi X. Um, it just feels more premium, more solid. Uh, and the overall feel of the keyboard itself, it feels like it's, it's, it's built a little better than the, um, than 
its competition with Yamaha in the Modi X. So, but that's just a matter of opinion as far as how it feels. But uh, in my opinion, again, it doesn't feel super cheap. Now it does lack aftertouch. So if you get the regular Phantom, you get a key bed with aftertouch. They removed the aftertouch off of this keyboard. So no aftertouch on the Phantom O series of keyboards. Now you have to look here, the screens and the screens are actually two different sizes. Now on the big Phantom, the screen size is that you get a seven inch screen and this screen size here is you get a 5.5 inch screen. And it does actually make a difference, especially as things get smaller on the screen, you're trying to select stuff. Now they're both touch screens. So you can still select things here, you know, using your fingers and whatnot. But when you are trying to select different things here, sometimes it does get a little cramped. And it's for me, it's hard for me to select the different uh, instruments and stuff. If you're in different menus where there's a whole bunch of instruments and stuff on one screen as to where it's a lot easier on the on the big brother, the big phantom. However, the screen resolution on here is uh, 1280 by 720. So it's actually, you know, if it was a video, if it was a video screen, it would be considered a high definition video screen. Now it's not. Uh, 1920 by 1280 it's 1280 by 720 so it'll be like a 720p screen but what i'm saying basically is the resolution is a very good resolution so it's very very crisp and clear you can see everything really well even though it is smaller it actually has a higher resolution than the resolution that is on the big phantom which is 800 by 480 which will be like a standard definition screen um I just don't think that they needed to make it as clear and crisp because it's bigger. I think if you use the same resolution from this screen and put it in this screen because it is smaller by an inch and a half or so, um, because it's smaller, you would, you know, it would, the screen would appear to be maybe probably a little bit blurry and stuff like that. So this is a very good screen, very crisp. It is still a touch screen. However, it is smaller 5.5 versus seven on the screen here. Now, as far as the faders uh, go on the Phantom O series, they removed one of the faders. So you get eight faders on the big Phantom, you have nine faders. So what you're losing is you're using, you're losing that, that dedicated USB audio um, fader. So on the big Phantom, when you have US, when you have audio coming in via USB, you can control that volume just by using that last slider all the way on the end, that ninth slider. On here, you don't have that. You can go into the mixer and you can still adjust it using the using your touchscreen, but you don't have a dedicated fader that is dedicated to that to that volume level. And also, they're not uh, backlit, so you have all of your um, your faders here. They're actually backlit, so they're you know they got the LEDs not not, not backlit, but they have the LEDs next to them, and. Um, and so you can actually see what levels your different channels are actually at, because sometimes when you switch different, you know, when you go from one scene to another scene or one sound to another sound or whatever, uh, what you actually see as far as your actual physical um, faders doesn't really represent where your levels are really at. So your LEDs actually show you where your levels are actually at on here. You don't have those uh you don't have those leds also you don't have the leds around your um your encoders here either so uh, all these knobs here no leds and your knobs here you do have leds so you lose those uh, leds when you decide to go with the phantom o instead of the instead of the big phantom also with losing that ninth slider when you're using the virtual toy tone wheel organ a tone wheel like your Hammond B3s and whatnot, their manuals actually have uh, nine draw bars per manual. Well, you actually lose that ninth draw bar. You can only control that ninth draw bar in the actual screen um, with the Phantom, with the regular Phantom. Of course, since you have nine actual sliders, that USB, when you switch over into your um, virtual tone wheel organ, that USB fader becomes your ninth slider. So here you're not going to be able to control that. So if you're really heavy into playing organs and adjusting your, you know, your draw bars and stuff like that on the fly, and you really, really need that last, um, slider and you're not willing to have it inside of the screen, then this is not going to be the, the keyboard for you because you're, 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 you're actually missing that. Um, over here on the Phantom O, uh, you have your S1 and your S2 buttons, but on your big Phantom, you have your chord memory, your transpose, your octaves up and down, you have your arpeggio, you have your portamento, and your S1 and S2 buttons. So you actually get more 
buttons over here in the big phantom versus on this one, it's less buttons right here, but you're not actually missing those buttons. They're just moved up here. So you still get your chord memory, your arpeggio, you get your transpose up and down and stuff is over here. So I don't necessarily see that as a downgrade in any way. They just moved it from being over here to being over here. Uh, for me, it would just be a matter of something that I needed to get used to. Um, but that's, um, for me, that's something that's not really a, uh, that's not really a big deal. Now your TR uh, rec and category selection buttons here uh those are going to be bigger on your phantom so they operate the same way but on the regular phantom they're actually bigger on the small phantom they're just the uh, they're just they're just going to be smaller now i don't know if you can tell uh, the uh, the video but these all these buttons here or these knobs here uh, that blue is just painted on it's not actually they're not actually lights um, down here those buttons actually light up and change color on the phantom 07 they don't um they don't actually change color or anything they're just uh, they're just painted on so that is going to be um that is going to be a difference there and uh also on here so well let's talk about so the, on the big phantom you actually have your zone selection and zone basically like your activation buttons to turn your zones on um, there's separate buttons. So you actually get 16 buttons here. You get eight buttons. They basically combine the functionality into eight buttons. So instead of having 16, you have eight. And so you use this zone select button to be able to select your zones and to be able to activate them and stuff like that, to turn them on. Um, you, you, you'll be using the same buttons. So they reduced the amount of buttons down also on your synth control section. Uh, over here, you see you only have two knobs for your synth control. You got one, two, uh, a cutoff and a resonance here. Uh, down here on the big phantom, you get like your full ADSR, um, full ADSR stuff. So you can act, you got all those knobs there for ADSR, your resonance, you got value, you got type, you got amp level, you got depth, you know, so you, you have more buttons over here for controlling your common kind of parameters. Whenever you're doing synth sounds, you don't actually have that on on the phantom o so again if that's something you can live without then hey that's not something that you that's not something that you need now uh, as far as the pads are concerned the pads are the same size they operate the same way all the functionality for the pads is exactly the same and again the build quality and stuff is very very good even in this keyboard um it's not quite you know, the, you know, having a metal chassis and stuff like that just makes it feel better. And the key bed and stuff is better, but this is still a very, very well built keyboard. And for the price, you can't really argue so much with that functionality. Remember on the Modi X, you only get four sliders on here. They actually give you eight sliders. So having eight and only removing one is a big deal. Having eight knobs, um, instead of just the four, like you get on the Modi X, it's a big deal. It gives you more hands-on control. That's immediate right away where you don't have to go digging into um, either a screen or hitting special buttons to activate different things. So it does work better for the stage. So um, now let's go ahead and turn the keyboards around, take a look at the backs and we'll see what the differences are as far as their connectivity is concerned. All right, so now we've got the Phantom 07 turned around and I just want to show the uh, what the back of the keyboard looks like. So all the way over here, you give your, you have your, um, DC in, so it has an external power supply. So, uh, you, you do get the wall wart, little box and stuff that comes with it uh, on the regular phantom. You know, you just have the, the regular plug, the AC in. Um, so you just come right in, plug right into the wall with a very, very standard, um, uh, very standard cord, uh, because the power supply is internally is inside of the uh, phantom but for weight savings and so on and so forth they've taken that out of here and so you get the uh, wall wart and then you have your power uh, your power button which is going to be you know the same um then you get a, your headphones jack here uh, quarter inch headphones jack and that's the same and then for your main outs you get your left and right um, trs um, balanced jacks so it does give you balanced outputs here on the regular phantom However, you do get XLR jacks out for your, for your main, for your main outs. So, uh, on this one here, you get regular TRS jacks on the big phantom, you get, um, XLR jacks for the outputs. Um, now this includes something, the, 
Uh, Phantom does not include the big Phantom. It gives you just a uh, an eighth inch jack for uh, plugging in um, headphones there. So that's kind of nice. Um, and then your sub outs here, you get a left uh, left model and a right. So then you get your regular left and right uh, additional output, which is actually very good on the Modi X. You don't get an additional output uh, in the back. You get your mains and that's it. But on the Phantom, it actually gives you some assignable outputs as well, along with your mains. So that's uh, that's very nice. Now on the big Phantom, um, instead of just getting two additional uh, outputs here, left and right, you actually get four of them. So you get more assignable outputs on the big Phantom than you do with the Phantom O series. Um, and now you have your, your input here. So this is your mic and line inputs and uh, you have a, a level here. And uh, so you get something here for your mic. So you can plug a microphone in there and then you get your left and your right here uh, as well for any kind of regular line inputs. So um, that's, uh, that's nice that you do get inputs and stuff like that. On here, you know, left and right, and you get a separate uh, mic. Now, if you get the big Phantom, these um, the inputs they become combo jacks, so you don't get to mic a separate mic and line inputs, but you have two combo jacks, so they can be um, either quarter inch or XLR jacks. And so, what that means is you also get Phantom power with the big Phantom. Here you can plug in, you know, like your regular, you know, dynamic microphone and stuff like that. But if you're using like your condenser mics and stuff that you use in the studio that require Phantom power, you cannot do it with this. You would need something additional that you can plug it into or something like that. But uh, with this, uh, with the big Phantom, you don't need that. You could plug it right in. You can, you know, and then you can apply Phantom power and so on and so forth right into your keyboard. On this one, because they're TRS jacks and aren't XLR jacks, TRS does not give you uh, phantom power. So you will lose the phantom power uh, that this, uh, that the big phantom offers, but still great connectivity. You get a mic, you get a line input left and right. Uh, you get additional outputs. You get a small eighth inch uh, jack. You get left and right balanced outputs um, for your regular outputs, TRS, and then you get a headphone jack and then uh, the external um, the external, um, the external power supply. Now let's just slide down the keyboard a little bit here and show the rest of the inputs. All right. So we just slid things down here a bit. And so now you're looking at your, uh, your USB. This is for your memory. This is for like updating your, your, the software and stuff inside of the unit and so on and so forth. That's what that USB is there for. This USB is to plug to like a computer or, you know, some other kind of a host or something where you, you know, transferring MIDI and audio back and forth. This transfers MIDI and audio back and forth. And then you got your, um, an external device where you can plug in, you know, like flash drives and stuff like that to load different stuff into the keyboard. Or if you wanted to control, maybe like, uh, you want to control like a MIDI controller or something like that, that was bus powered. You can actually do it with this, um, jack here. Now on the big phantom, you get three of these. So this external uh, device uh, USB, you get three of them instead of just one. So they took off two of them. And then you have your standard, you know, your, your standard MIDI um, jacks here. You get an in and an out on the, the big Phantom. You get a mini, you get a, an out, an in and a through and your through can function as an out as well. So you actually get two outs or a through if you want it and an in. So you get three of them instead of just two of them when you get the big phantom. And then over here you have um, your standard sustain pedal here, control your sustain pedal. And then you get your um, two different foot switches that are assignable. Uh, so you get two foot switches and, uh, and a sustain pedal. So uh, you do get some pretty great connectivity back here. Now with the big phantom, you do, you are allowed to have more um, foot pedal controls. Uh, I think you get just one more, but, um, but for the most part, uh, this is a pretty good amount. So they did take one off. And um, also if you know about the big phantom, it has CV and gate on the phantom O series. There's no CV and gate. Uh, so controlling your modular gear and stuff like that using that control voltage um, You can't do it with this because there's no um, There's no CV and gates also because this doesn't have a analog filter where the big phantom has an analog filter There's no dedicated analog filter 
uh, outputs uh, on this keyboard because it does not um, it doesn't actually have that uh, doesn't have that functionality. But uh, overall, um, you still get um, a very a very big array of you know you know of connectivity and stuff on the back. I you know there's nothing I can really complain about complain about for the price um, as far as it being you know like half the price and still giving you you know, multiple foot controllers, still giving you, you know, a mic in, you know, line ins, still giving you um, additional outputs like the sub outs. Uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's a really, it's actually a very, very good deal. And you still get your, your external uh, MIDI device, your external device that you can control or external device that you can use here with your USB and stuff like that. So great, great connectivity as far as this is concerned on the back. Now let's talk about how they differ internally all right so now let's talk about the um, internal differences between these two keyboards because there are some internal differences so roland in their phantoms they have what are called what they call bmc chips or behavior modeling chips and the behavior modeling chips what they do is they handle all of the um sonic processing so like your sound processing your sounds your effects stuff like that it is controlled by those chips with the Phantom, the big Phantom, you get four behavior modeling chips inside. With the Phantom O, you get uh, two behavior modeling chips inside. So on the Phantom, you have double the sonic processing power. There's double the power in this keyboard than this keyboard as far as your um, sonic capabilities and stuff go. We'll talk a little bit about a little bit more about that uh, a little later. So um, next thing is as far as your what's called tone remain. So you know when you basically when you switch from one scene to another and whatnot when you're playing the keyboard, tone remain is basically like if you hold down a sustain pedal or you're holding down the notes and you switch you switch over to you know another sound, it will seamlessly switch over to the other sound while holding out the sound that you are holding down. In other words, when you're switching sounds, it's not going to cut off, right? So the tone remain that's available for this keyboard, the tone remain, it gives you eight. You can you can have eight different zones going, hold them down, switch over, and it will seamlessly transition from one sound to the other sound uh, without cutting out, without cutting out at all. On the big Phantom, uh, it's actually different. So you get 16. So you can have tone remain on for all 16 channels. You could play 16 channels at once, hold them all down and then switch scenes and it will hold all of that stuff out for you and switch over seamlessly. This one, if you have more than eight, um, it's going to, it's going to cut off. So you, you actually have to, uh, you, when you turn on a setting, there's a setting inside that you turn on and it'll give you access to eight of your eight of your zones. Now, if you want access to all 16 of your zones and stuff like that, then you you turn that off. But what happens is, is now you don't get that tone remain at all when you switch stuff over, but you have access to 16 different sounds, if that makes sense. So uh, basically tone remain eight sounds when you're switching over. This one gives you um, it gives you gives you 16. So on the on the roland not the roland the yamaha modi x um the tone remain on the big um the montage it gives you eight so it gives you the same amount as the fa07 um i mean excuse me the roland phantom 07 not fa07 phantom 07 it gives you the same amount uh but the modi x is actual competitor only four so you can have four different channels and it will switch over seamlessly and the notes and stuff won't cut off the sound won't cut off when you're switching sounds uh you have you can do it with a maximum of four on the modi x you get eight on the phantom 07 so this actually beats the modi x as far as the competition is concerned now uh just one caveat that the tone remain um does not apply to the virtual tone wheel organ. So if you have a virtual tone wheel organ engine going and it's activated and you're playing notes or whatever, you cannot sustain those notes out and switch over and uh, switch over to another 
you know, another patch or another scene or something, and those notes re keep playing. It's going to cut out if you're using the, using the virtual tone wheel organ. Now, the same is true for the Big Phantom as well, though. If you're using the virtual tone wheel organ and you're switching something over, and you know, you switch, you know, switch patches, the virtual tone wheel organ is going to cut out even on this keyboard as well. That's just the way the architecture and stuff is made. And while we're talking about that, uh, the V piano sound engine is not included. It is not available for the Phantom O series. So the V piano sound engine, their, you know, their big sound engine that's completely modeled and whatnot, is, you know, lots of, you know, expandability, not expandability, lots of, you know, tweakability. You can change a lot of things, edit it. You can literally go in there and tune every note and stuff like that. You, you don't get that on the Phantom O. So you do get the supernatural um, pianos on here. So all their supernatural pianos, but you do not get the V piano sound engine. Now for me personally, that actually makes a big difference because for a lot of my patches or the way I stack my layers and stuff like that, I start out with a grand piano and then I add pads and strings and horns and different things like that on top of a piano patch. And then I have my piano on number one and maybe, you know, a EP on number two and maybe a pad on number three and a string on number four or whatever the case may be. So uh, that's the way I set it up. By having the V piano sound engine, the V piano sound engine has an unlimited polyphony unlimited polyphony and the V piano sound engines polyphony is separate from the 256 voices that you get in your regular Zincor sound engine. So it's actually separate. So when I am playing on this keyboard, I was playing this keyboard live and I was using just a regular, um, not a regular, I was using a supernatural, um, piano and I had some pads and different things and stuff, you know, on my channels, like I normally do. And the, the notes and stuff on here, were actually cutting out as to where on here, I don't have that problem because I use the V piano sound engine along with those sounds. So it does increase your ability to stack your sounds and do, you know, your polyphony basically is increased because you're pulling from a different engine altogether. So if you are someone who they can use this pads and piano, maybe use this piano as your base and then stacks a lot of instruments on top of it and play those layers all together. You're going to run out of voices faster on here. And just because of the way pianos are sampled and stuff like that and put into these keyboards, they take up a lot of polyphony. Uh, a grand piano sound takes up a lot of polyphony, uses a lot of voices. It's the same. The same is true for this. The same is true for the, the Yamaha. Uh, montage, Modi X, so on and so forth. They just take up a lot of voices because of the way they're sampled and put in there and, and, and whatnot. So, uh, but if you're using the V piano sound engine, um, it's its own separate engine. And so you don't have to use any of the Zincor sounds or the other sounds or whatever. You don't have to use any of those voices. So I did run out of voices faster on here when I was actually playing in a live scenario, when I had stuff stacked up. Now, uh, that just means you have to make some adjustments. You have to play less notes. You have to go in there and maybe adjust the partials and stuff, take some sounds and stuff out and do all the things that you would normally do whenever you start hitting a polyphony ceiling. But it is kind of odd that even with 256 voices, you do hit that, hit that polyphony ceiling pretty quick on here. Um, and the same is true for here. If I don't use the V piano sound engine, it runs out and cuts out the same exact way. Now, I'm just not sure why um, in these keyboards today with all the processing power and stuff that we have today, while we're still dealing with like these kind of polyphony ceilings where you get 256 voices, it sounds, it sounds pretty good, but in the Zincor system, um, is yes, you get 256 voices, but each voice, each time you hit a note, each note actually registers as two voices. So in essence, it's almost like playing something with 128 voice polyphony versus 256 voice polyphony because each Zincor each Zincor note actually takes up two voices. So anyway, but I did run out of voices faster on here just because of the way I, you know, st stack my sounds and stuff when I'm playing live. And if I was, you know, on the sustain pedal or anything like that, I, or I did some sort of a glist or anything, or there was multiple notes being held out, you know, like you going up, up and down the keyboard or something like that. And there's some notes, multiple notes and stuff being held out. It, it really cut out because I didn't have that V piano sound engine, but that may not apply to everyone. But, uh, so this doesn't have the V piano sound engine available. 
uh, and what I think it is, I'm not sure, so don't quote me on this, but it's probably just a matter of it lacks that processing power. So it only has the two chips. And so by having only two chips instead of four chips to process the power, it may not be able to process all the sonic power altogether with the VPNO sound engine and plus, you know, uh, all of your other sounds. Or it could just be a matter of rolling deciding, hey, you know, we're going to give you this keyboard at a budget price, but we're not going to include our most premium the piano sound engine if that's what you want then you need to step it up and get a um step it up and get the big get the big phantom also uh they came out with a new um wavetable um expansion pack for phantom it only works in the big phantom so enzyme the wavetable expansion pack that they came out with uh, the wavetable uh expansion the the sound engine is really like a sound engine uh, that you can put in here um you can purchase it online um, it's not free, but you can pur purchase it online and you can put it in the big phantom. You cannot put that in the phantom O at all. So it doesn't apply to this keyboard. It doesn't, doesn't take it. And again, I think that that's probably due to the sonic capabilities and how, how much processing power it takes in order for enzyme to work properly and probably having the two behavior modeling chips, uh, versus the four is why you cannot actually use it with the uh with the phantom o so uh and so what that what that leads me to believe is that there's going to be more you know as roland rolls out more sounds and more sound engines and so on and so forth there are probably going to be new sound engines and stuff that are available for the regular phantom that aren't going to be available for the phantom o so that's something you might want to consider when roland comes out with something more than likely it will work in the big phantom but it is not necessary it, it doesn't mean that it will also work in the in the phantom oh so if big you know sound expansion packs and stuff like that is your thing um you may consider looking at the um the big the big phantom if you can uh if you can justify it as far as the price is concerned so the audio interfaces in these are just a little bit different so you do get 32 channels out on both of them uh, with your audio interface so you can plug into a doll and you can see 32 channels show up basically 16 stereo channels and you can do all of your multi-tracking and stuff like that directly to your doll from both of these you know so this transmits via usb both both midi and audio and it gives you 16 channels out that is more than the modi x the modi x gives you uh 10 so it's like a total of 10 channels out this gives you a total of 32 channels out um and then your input, but your inputs, that's where they differ a little bit. You do get three stereo channels or basically six individual channels in on the big Phantom and you only get four on the Phantom O. So four channels in, 32 channels out. This has 32 channels out and six channels in. Something else to consider as well is Roland launched some what they call like their legendary um, expansion packs that includes the uh, sound um, it includes sounds from the Jupiter 8, the SH-101, the Juno 106, the JX-3P. Those come free with the Phantom. You just go online to the Rolling Cloud and you just download them and you put them in the board. Here, if you want the Jupiter 8 sounds, the SH-101 sounds, the Juno 106 sounds, so on and so forth, you actually have to pay for them. And right now the cost is $149 uh, a piece. Um, so you actually have to, you have to actually buy them. So there's four of them, $149 a piece, basically $150. 150 a piece 600 bucks and then you can have them here they actually come free so free on here you actually have to pay for them now enzyme is not free so who knows what other sound packs and stuff they come out how much stuff they're going to keep offering for free uh, eventually you end up paying for you know your expansions and, and stuff like that so but uh if you want the same ones as here you want the jupiter 8 expansion packs they're available but you do have to pay for it is where when you get the rolling phantom the regular phantom you do you do not have to pay for it and so while we're talking about expansion packs let's talk about the room that these have so this gives you two gigabytes uh, of storage for your and it's shared storage between your expansion packs and your multi samples so the more multi samples you have the less expansion packs that you can have inside of the keyboard and this gives you two gigabytes and you share those two gigabytes with your expansion packs and um your multi samples if you create multi samples because you can create multi samples on both of these keyboards this one here gives you one fourth the amount so your expansion packs and your multi samples you get 256 megabytes 
and it is shared. So uh, you get one fourth the amount of room on here as you do here for expansion packs and for multi samples. So if you do a lot of sampling, like you want to create a lot of multi samples and you want to put it on, put it in the board, you have far less room in here to do that than you do with here. And if you're planning on, you know, going on and, you know, you want to add a bunch of expansion packs and stuff like that, and you want to carry them all on the board at once, you can carry more expansion packs in here than you can on here because this is, you know, four times the size as far as this is concerned. Now, as far as your pads, now, when you want to load samples and you want to use them, and you want to load them to the pads, that's a separate, that's, that's a separate place. You still get two gigabytes to load samples into your pads, just like you get two gigabytes on the big phantom. So two gigabytes and, uh, for your pads. And then there's also another two gigabytes of just storage. If you want to just put your storage, you know, you're just going to store it in the keyboard of samples and stuff that aren't on the pads and aren't necessarily multi samples. You get two gigabytes of storage on here for that and two gigabytes of storage on here for that. So the only difference is, is when we're talking about multi samples and when we're talking about expansion packs, that's where you get one fourth the memory. As far as if you're just going to be putting samples in here and just saving them in storage, then you get two gigabytes here. If you're putting, putting them here and you're going to save them here, you get two gigabytes. As far as your pads and stuff are concerned, two gigabytes, two gigabytes. So the same same exact the same exact amount but as far as how many samples it can store just like you're gonna you're gonna just put you have a whole bunch of single samples and stuff in there um that you can use with your uh to use to create multi samples and stuff like that this is going to hold 8,000 samples and this is going to hold 2048 samples so a maximum of 2048 samples and this will do a maximum of 8,000 samples. So if you're really into sampling and you want to carry a bunch of, you know, sample, you know, a bunch of different stuff, a lot of stuff with you, expansion packs and so on and so forth, this is going to hold more at once. Now you can always swap out as far as this keyboard is concerned, you can swap it out. So you can save samples onto a flash drive and not carry the ones that you need. And then when you need them, then you can load them in as you need them. But you can't have them all in there at the same time. So there is a difference as far as the room, uh, as far as the room is concerned. So, um, but overall, um, there's a lot of things on here that are exactly the same. The sequencer is exactly the same. It works exactly the same as the sequencer on here. All the um, DAW control. So for Ableton, Logic, uh, Main Stage, all of that, um, native doll control that shows up on the screen shows up on the screen here shows up on the screen here so it's exactly the same the zen core sounds you can share between the two keyboards i've done some sound testing i was going to do it on the video but i feel like it's almost like really a waste of time they sound exactly the same if you pull up a zen core sound on here and play it and pull up a zen core sound on here and play it they sound exactly the same it's not like the Yamaha montage and Modi X where the Yamaha montage has the pure analog circuit. So it has a, a, a better, it has better analog internals inside that, you know, make it sound different whenever you're using like the analog outputs on here. That's not the case. This sounds exactly like this. There's no reduced polyphony as far as your Zen core sounds, 256 voices, 256 voices. It is exactly the same. The pads, everything that you do with the pads, they operate exactly the same. The sampler operates exactly the same. The, uh, the virtual tone wheel organ is included on here. They sound exactly the same, you know, besides not having that ninth um, draw bar, it's exactly the same. The, the sound is exactly the same. So if I were out today and I were in the market and I was going to buy a keyboard and I would, I, I was going to buy a, you know, more of a budget keyboard. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't afford or couldn't justify. Maybe I can afford it, but I just can't justify spending, you know, three, four thousand dollars that this keyboard costs. And I wanted something that was more in the budget realm. If I was picking between this and Yamaha's Modi X, I would pick this over the Modi X and I would pick it because I have more control here. Um, the audio interface is better. The DAW integration with another DAW is going to be better. Now, the only reason why I would pick the Modi X is if I just didn't like the sound of this keyboard. If I like the sound of Yamaha better and I don't care for the sound of the Roland, that would be the only reason I could justify getting the Yamaha versus the Roland because the Roland just seems to do so much more better. You just have 
you have a full, well, one is a synthesizer. This is actually considered a workstation by Roland. I actually um, wrote Roland and asked him, do you consider your phantoms to be workstations? And they said, yes, even though it only has a pattern sequencer and so on and so forth, it doesn't have a linear sequencer. Um, your sampler doesn't have any kind of time stretching and stuff like that. Like you get with a core chronos, you get time stretching, you get a linear sequencer, so on and so forth, whatever. But you get audio tracks. You don't really get audio tracks with this, even though you can record audio tracks. There's a workaround. You can use the sampler to record what audio tracks and stuff you want. And then you can actually um, basically like automate the the pads to come in, you know, in your sequencer. It's not really a part of the sequencer, but there's a way to include audio in your sequences, but it's not like just having regular audio tracks, but they do consider it to be a workstation. And so as a workstation, it's, it just does a little bit more. It does a lot more as far as your um, sequence and stuff is concerned than the Modi X. I think the, the Modi X, the only advantage it has is that uh, you get 256 bar loops that's where so you can record 256 bars or 256 measures and then it will loop in this keyboard you only get 64 measures and then it will loop so they're both pattern sequencers uh, but you get more measures that you can work with so you can really record like you're recording in a linear sequencer if you're using the modi x with this after 64 measures it's going to automatically loop the only thing with this keyboard here is uh, even though you only get, you know, you only get 64, um, you actually can, you know, change and edit your notes and stuff like that. You got a piano roll, you have what's what they call the, like the microscope and you can really go in there and change the notes and change the timing and do different things. Uh, just like you can, like in a doll with a piano roll and move your notes and stuff around. And, you know, you can use your finger and move the stuff or whatever, just like you can with, you know, a doll, uh, you can't do that in the Modi X. So once it's recorded, you can't really say, Ooh, man, I, I meant to hit an A flat and I hit a, hit an A. Let me go in there and change the note. You can't do it. You just have to re-record it because it's really a synthesizer. It's not really meant to be a, it's not really meant to be a workstation. So, but this is a workstation and you can do that. So it's a much better sequencer as far as all the functions and stuff that it gives you. The only thing is after 64 measures, you know, it's, it's going to, it's going to loop and it's the same for both of these both of these keyboards now me personally i use ableton live i'm normally using the session view anyway and that's how i record i record in clips but you know maybe if you record um you know classical or you record you know jazz or something like that you might want like a linear sequencer but for most people's music and even people who are playing some of that type of music you can possibly you could still record with these but basically what i'm saying is the sequencers in these two keyboards are exactly the same. The sound is exactly the same. Yes, you know, you get reduced um, outputs and stuff on the back. You don't get the phantom power and stuff like that. But those are things that are nice to have. But for a lot of people, they're not really essential. Um, the fact that it gives you an additional assignable, additional assignable outputs where you don't get them on the Modi X. I mean, like this is just the better buy as far as I'm concerned. And for the price, I now think that this is probably the best value for the money in this kind of segment as far as the keyboards and stuff are concerned because it is so much like the Phantom. If I took this on stage and I was using Zencore sounds and I wasn't using the Piano Sound Engine, you wouldn't be able to tell any difference between this and another keyboard and functionally how they work with the TR, uh, TR rec, you know, recording and the rhythm patterns and everything. It's, it's the same. You know, yes, you do lose some controls and stuff like that for controlling your synth parameters and stuff like that. But overall, I think this is a good buy. If you are in the market, definitely check out the Phantom 07 because to me, this is the best keyboard in this segment of keyboards that you can buy for the money today. And with that, thank you so much for watching this channel and sticking with me. Hopefully I covered everything for you and I've enabled you to make a buying decision. And I will see you guys on the next video.